Tori-san. Hmm? Oh, I didn't notice you there, Yagami-san. Don't tell me you're using a phone camera to take pictures for your article. Resolution on these things is plenty high nowadays. You have a problem? Not really, no. Just didn't know sensationalist food columns were a thing. I only report on things that interest me. That's my professional philosophy. Well, is it gonna take a while? I'm here to talk. Don't worry. I'll be done soon. All right. Kinda strange sharing a bowl of ramen with you. I thought the day would never come. Can you not? <laughs> Relax, Yagami-san. Are you still working for Kajihira? I'm not sure I'd go that far. He just calls me in for favors every now and again. Helps to be on good terms with the guy. For my job, you know? Uh-huh. It'd be nice to be close with you, too, Yagami-san. I heard you were the one who discovered Shintani-sensei's corpse, after all. I'm here to talk 89. If that's not what this is about, I'm not sticking around. All right, all right. But you'll owe me for this. Generally, drug development starts with the discovery of a compound that can treat a given disease. That compound becomes the candidate for a drug. They then test its effects on animals, after which the drug heads to clinical trials. Which is a nicer way of saying human experimentation, by the way. As for the process, it can take years, sometimes even longer, to ensure a drug is truly safe for public consumption. Yeah, yeah, it's tough, I get it. Before now, Alzheimer's drugs have only been able to slow the progress of the disease. None can cure it completely. But Director Kido's 89 proved remarkably effective at doing just that when tested on mice. If it can work on humans as well, maybe we can finally kiss Alzheimer's goodbye. At least, that's what the paper they published a year ago claimed. Interesting. Yagami-san. Hmm? In this country, one in four people over the age of 80 is affected by dementia. That means for a couple in their 50s, there's a good chance that one of their parents has it. And the odds that one member of that couple will develop it themselves is 50-50. No matter how you look at it, dementia is an inescapable issue. If I ever experienced symptoms myself, I'd go to the doctor straight away. In some cases, they can slow the progress enough that you can even keep working. I guess my point is, dementia is not something to fear. It's a possibility to prepare for. Our biggest enemy is ignorance and apathy. Kinda reminds me of someone. Yeah, if you say so. Good. I'd like to give you a rundown of what exactly Alzheimer's is, then. You interested? Well, you're gonna, even if I say no, right? <laughs> you bet I would. Now let's begin. Out of all the diseases that can cause dementia, Alzheimer's accounts for roughly 70% of cases. It's believed to be brought about by buildup of a protein called amyloid beta in the brain. When that happens, nerve cells start dying off and the brain begins to atrophy. So to put this in layman's terms, Waste buildup kind of shrinks the brain. <laughs> That's one way to put it, yes. But even that is just a theory at this point. There's still much to learn about Alzheimer's. And when your brain shrinks? 
your memory is impaired. Let me explain. There are three processes involved in memory, encoding, storage, and retrieval. Alzheimer's impairs the first step, encoding. This makes it near impossible to remember new things. I'll give you an example that stuck with me. When doctors asked a dementia patient the date, they had no problem producing the correct answer. But when asked the year, the patient said 1952. Their mind was stuck decades in the past. You see, dementia not only inhibits new memories, but jumbles the ones you already have as well. Hmm. I don't think I understand. Good. So how exactly does 89 cure Alzheimer's? According to their research, when they injected 89 into the test mice, it brought about a process known as autophagy. Which is what? It's a Greek word that means self-devouring. That's what your body starts to do to its own proteins. In other words, all the amyloid beta built up in the mice's brains began to instantly break down. Instantly? Yes. And once it was all gone, their Alzheimer's stopped progressing entirely. The most shocking thing is that even brain cells which had lost function were able to recover. As one researcher put it, it's as though the brain turns on a backup generator. If they can bring about similar effects in humans, they'll have a cure for Alzheimer's. That's right. There are millions of patients worldwide, and that number is growing steadily every day. If they actually complete this drug, it could truly change the world as we know it. It's nothing short of a dream drug for both buyers and sellers. <laughs> if you ask me, it sounds too good to be true. Excuse me? I mean, the vice director of the ADDC suspected something fishy was going on with it. But when he started digging around, someone offed him to keep their secret safe. Made it look like a brawl so nobody would get suspicious. What kind of secret are we talking? Like the drug's effects being falsified. No, there's no chance of that. Huh? How do you know? Since the announcement of AD9, countless animal tests have proven successful. It's no fabrication. One test after another, they've proven its viability. And you're sure? Yes. I'm of the mind they should push forward faster, even if the paper was a little rough around the edges. After all, dementia drugs are being developed all around the world. It would be a shame if someone beat them to the punch, both for the ADDC and for Japan. Kido-san is far too cautious. This is no time to be testing on animals. They need to move to clinical trials and get this thing out. By which you mean? Experimenting on humans. Human experimentation. Wait. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Just, are you absolutely sure there's nothing off about 89? I guess there is an interesting detail I noticed. Hmm? Kido-san is listed as the sole author of the 89 research. But in truth, he only put his name on the paper to lend it credibility. The key researcher was someone else entirely. A guy you know, too. Man by the name of Shono. So the one I want... It's Shono, huh? So you're saying... Shono's the creator of 89? Seems so. The paper would never have gained such worldwide traction without Kido-san, though. They needed a leading expert to rubber stamp the research and make it seem more official. That kind of thing is pretty common, though. Not really a cause for concern. Shono, what's your role in all of this?
Welcome back. Hey there, Yagami-san. The gang's all here, huh? How did things go with Hattori-san? Did you learn anything useful? Yeah, I guess. Wait, are you saying there isn't actually anything up with 89? That's what Hattori said, yeah. This is the first time I'm hearing about Kido not really being involved, though. It's possible Shono's hiding the truth from even him. Maybe. But first, one term in particular stuck with me from my chat with Hattori-san. Which is? Human experimentation. Go on. Apparently, 89 is just about ready to be tested on real human subjects. <laughs> well, that's gross. Side effects include bloating, blindness, and death, right? Knock it off. Sorry, sorry. What's bothering you about that, Yagami-san? Well, it's just... I've just been thinking... What if all these murders were secretly experimental trials for 89? You're... you're serious? If Shono's the one behind all this... What? You think this guy Shono went out, hired an assassin, and started killing people? Guess it's a bit of a stretch, huh? Even if these people were test cases, why would Shono have to murder them? This is a dementia drug, not some kind of chemical weapon. No, but what if it really did have some kind of crazy side effects, though? Like, they didn't want to kill the people, but they ended up dying anyways. It was perfectly fine when they tested it on mice, though. If it ended up killing someone, then... Wait a sec. Yeah, wait a sec is right. We're on the same page here. What if 89 was completely harmless to mice, but lethal when introduced into the human body? If that was the case, they'd need to perform a ton of experiments to make sure it was fixed. Which is why they killed all those Kyore guys. But back it up. If they're testing a drug, wouldn't they want to use it on an actual patient? I mean, it's not like those Kyore guys all had Alzheimer's or anything. That's true. Actually, it says here that they test new drugs on healthy humans as well. They're the control group to make sure the drug is safe. Yeah, eventually. It wouldn't make any damn sense for him to start on anyone but real patients, though. But... Just give it a rest. Try taking this seriously for once. We are taking this seriously! Says the dumbass kid who keeps spouting tinfoil hat shit about goddamn human experiments! <laughs> the only dumbass here is the guy who can't consider all the possible options. Oh, is that right? Next, you're gonna tell me they experiment on old man Waku, too! Fucking idiots. Hmm? What? That incident three years ago at the ADDC. The guy who died, Wakusan. Didn't he have Alzheimer's? Hey, I, I think you're onto something. Huh? Think about it, Kaito-san. Wakusan was an Alzheimer's patient at the center. We know for a fact that Okubo didn't kill him, but they never tracked the real murderer down. All right, cool your fucking jets. That happened three years ago. AD9 didn't even exist back then. True, it was only announced last year. But all the research that went into that paper would have reached way further back. Huh? Wait, are we really onto something? It's hard to say for sure, but it's worth looking into at the very least. more thoughts about this whole human experimentation theory. Mind if we continue? Sure. Let's do it. Okay, so... 
Let's say Shono did experiment on Wakusan. Why would he do that? They normally do a lot more to ensure a drug is safe before it enters clinical trials. What was his motive for testing it then? Maybe he wanted to try his groundbreaking new drug on a real live human as soon as possible. If it worked, he'd have the cure. And he'd have it without dealing with all the red tape these things go through. It would have saved him years. That's possible. I guess Shono was surrounded by dementia patients. One little test wouldn't be a big deal, and if it succeeded, his drug would save the world. If it meant curing Alzheimer's sooner, he might have been okay accepting the risk. But instead of doing what it was meant to do, 89 had a horrible side effect. Death. The more I think about it, the more it feels like this is how it all went down. It's starting to make sense. But now, even though he knows the risks, he's still experimenting and using the mole to do it. I know this is all just a theory, but the pieces all seem to fit together. Going down that path, Yagami-san, that means Okubo really was innocent, yeah? But he murdered his girlfriend right after. I mean, that's why he's on death row. Quit it, Sugiura. We'll get to that later. Yeah. So, to summarize our theory so far. It all started three years ago when Shono accidentally killed a patient during an AD9 test. But those tests are still ongoing. That's why Hamura had all those Kyore guys killed. But wait, how would a guy like Shono get wrapped up with Yakuza and assassins? Your run-of-the-mill researcher wouldn't have the cash or connections for that shit. But what if someone close to him did? Someone Shono knows who's got Yakuza ties? The hell could that be? The Minister of Health. Now he's a Kazumi. <laughs> you think an active cabinet member is out hooking Shono up with Yakuza? Seriously? Hmm. I suppose the Minister would have enough power. But I'm not sure he has the motive. Especially not for such a risky move. Who else do we have then? Someone who could get Hamura and Shono in touch. Huh. Shigeru Kajihira. Chairman of the Kajihira Group. I'm not so sure about that, Yagami-san. Uh, huh? Think about it. The murdered Kyore Yakuza are Kajihira's men. Besides, there's no evidence of any connection between him and Shono. Uh, I guess you have a point there. Well, we can rule Kajihira out. Who is Shono's go-between, then? Ryusuke Kido, director of the ADDC. Oh, I see what you mean. Kido would have access to ADDC funding. There's even been talk of him having ties to the Yakuza somehow, right? I think you've cracked it, Yagami-san. It had to be Kido. Uh, I don't know if that's really true. Why? Think back to the AD9 press conference. You remember the look on Kido's face? He was so proud, innocent even. But if he knew about all this human experiment shit, no way he'd look like that. Kid's got a point. <clears throat> then maybe he was only told about the experiments after the conference took place. That would still make sense, right? Uh... First, Shono gets Kido to sign off on the 89 paper and publicly gives him all the credit. Thrilled about the possibilities, Kido proudly presents the research at that press conference. There's no turning back after that, even if he found out about the experiments. That's probably how Shono got Kido on his side. He then used Kido's funding and connections to bring in Hamura and the Mole. It feels like all the pieces are falling into place. Mm hmm That means... Kido's not actually the one in charge. Right. Shono is behind everything. Mm. 
Let's say you're right. When did Shono start using this guy? When was the Mole's first murder? Shono murdered a patient, Wakusan, three years ago. He and the Mole may have started working together then. But that was probably an accident, right? He didn't mean for Wakusan to die. In other words, he wouldn't need the Mole. All right. Maybe it was a different time then. Well, when was it? Probably Hashiki's death six months ago. And why do you say that? Hashiki inching closer to the truth about 89 was a serious problem for Shono. But as we know, Shono was in a taxi at the time of the beating. Meaning someone else must have been responsible for Hashiki's death. The man in the black raincoat? He's the mole? Yeah. Only the best of the best assassins would have the skill to do what they did to Hashiki. Can't argue with that. Who knows how close Hashki was to finding out about the human experimentation before he died. Yeah, and if he had, that would have been the end of the line for Shono. Seems like a plausible motive to me. Mm. So what, everything just makes sense? I don't know. If you have something to say, say it. I mean... This is still just a theory, right? It all sounds almost too convenient. Hmm? What do you mean? If Shono killed Wakusan at the ADDC three years ago, then Okubo, the primary suspect in the case, would be totally in the clear. Yep. Already proved that in court, remember? But Okubo, he... He killed his girlfriend right after. He stabbed her over and over. Even set the place on fire. Reeked of booze, too, even though he was supposed to be dry. Defend him all you want, but the guy's a murderer. That's why the whole thing was such a big deal. Everyone realized the court made a mistake. It took the death of an innocent girl for them to realize that Okubo probably did it after all. Yet here you are, claiming the court got it right claiming Okubo's innocent. But you just don't want to feel responsible for Emi Terasawa's death. That's it, isn't it? Enough, Sugiura. You're way out of line, and you don't know shit. Look, I know I get swept up in my emotions pretty easily sometimes. All the same, I'm trying to be fair here. Are you? So if we want to treat Yagami-san's theory like it's the truth, and we'll have to figure out whether or not Okubo is innocent. If he actually killed Wakasan. And how are you suggesting we do that? It's simple. We just go to Okubo and ask if he did it. You want to talk to him face to face? Meeting with a death row inmate isn't that easy. A lawyer like you should have no problem setting that up, right? can't stand me, though. From day one, Okubo insisted he was innocent, that he didn't kill Emi. But I... I abandoned him. Told him he'd be better off just giving up. Fine. But that's a pretty weak excuse for not going to talk to him now. If you really want to pursue this case, you don't have a choice, Yagami-san. Well... Hoshinoku. Yes? Let's go talk to Okubo. Think you can arrange that for me? I can try. Let me get in touch with the prison. Thanks. I'll be at Gendis if you want to find me. Looking over the old case files. All right.
Hello? You asked for it. Really, guys? ちょっと。Must we?
ありがとうございました。<笑>
いらっしゃいませ。Back to it. ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。あ<笑>あ。ヤガミさん。Something? Mind if I look over a case file? The ADDC one from three years ago. I'm seeing Okubo soon. Huh? What do you mean you're seeing Okubo? Hold on. I'll go pull the documents up. Thanks, Sari san. How's it going, Yagami san? Oh, not bad. What do you have there? The files for Emi Terasawa's case. I thought they might be useful too. Well, I. Yagami san, I think you should look them over if you're going to talk to Okubo. If you really don't need them, just leave them here. I'll put everything back later. Emi Terasawa, 26 years old at time of death. December 2nd, 2015, about 11 p.m. Her body is found on the second floor of a burnt out apartment building. 15 stab wounds to the chest, presumably inflicted while she was still alive. Cause of death, blood loss. No ash in her lungs, so she didn't inhale any smoke. Emi died before the fire started. Shinpei Okubo, the victim's boyfriend and roommate, was found at the scene and arrested. Murder weapon is thought to be a kitchen knife. It was covered in Okubo's prints. Okubo was wasted out of his mind when firefighters arrived at the apartment. Okubo san is not a violent person. And he hasn't even had a drink in over six years. Not a single drop since the incident. But Okubo claims he doesn't remember ever drinking. That he woke up surrounded by flames. He's pleaded innocence from day one. Yagami. Do you really have to do this? Go see Okubo, I mean. <sighs> yeah, looks like I do. But why? I need to know if he was really innocent. If he killed Wakusan three years ago. I'm going to find the truth, Kenda Sensei. What? In just one little prison chat? Well, either way, I never felt like I closed the book on this. I should have done this years ago. I mean, yeah, I defended him in court. But we didn't have anything definitive to prove his innocence. The only thing the ruling said was that they couldn't conclusively prove his guilt. Meaning, for the public at large, he as good as did it. 
Okuba got laid off from his job and had his personal details smeared all over the internet. Yeah. The guy barely even went outside. Couldn't sleep at night without his pills. But I didn't ask him about any of that. Didn't really care either. Until one day, Okubo gave up his years of sobriety, started drinking, and stabbed his girlfriend to death. And what? You think that's your fault? I helped set a murderer loose on the world. In other words, Emmy died because of me. I'm not gonna let you do this to yourself. Do you remember your dad's last case? Must have been almost 20 years ago. Do you, Yagami? Yeah. No way I could forget. The defendant in that case raped and murdered a 15-year-old girl. At least that's what they said he did. Everyone in the damn country thought that guy deserved to get executed. No thoughts of innocence, except from your dad. You know how it all went down after that. He gave the prosecution what for. Your dad never compromised his ideals, no matter what. He said a lawyer's job isn't discovering the truth, or even knowing it. It's proving the prosecution doesn't have enough evidence to convict. Do you understand? That's how he saw the defense's role. It takes some real guts to say that. That's why you looked up to him. And you would have never become an attorney without his influence. In the beginning, sure I did. But you know, a lot happened afterward. With my dad, and with me too. Yeah. It's possible the defendant actually was guilty. Raped the girl, killed her in cold blood. He disappeared almost immediately after the trial. And so, all of the hatred, all of the anger people felt, was thrown onto my dad. Not long after, he and my mom were killed by the victim's father. Even so, I don't think your old man did anything wrong. Our job's showing that the prosecution doesn't have enough evidence, not finding the truth. And when you defended Okubo the first time around, that's exactly what you did. Listen to me, Yagami. You didn't do anything wrong. Sure, I get what you're saying. But a girl burned to death because I was good at my job. Ever think about how that feels? What? It's easy to sit back and tell me I did nothing wrong, but put yourself in my shoes. Could you say you did the right thing? That's enough! How long are you gonna let this dominate your life? For as long as I live. Yagami speaking. Hey, it's Hoshino. I've arranged our chat with Okubo. Meet me at the taxi stand on West Shichifuku Street. I'm on my way there now. Got it. Thanks. I appreciate the concern. I've said all I wanted to say. It's fine. I half knew you weren't gonna listen anyway. Genda-sensei. Hmm? You and I both saw what happens when you don't pursue the truth. I can't let that go. I won't.
Over here, Yagami-san. Long time no see. Yagami Sensei. Yeah. It's been a while. I apologize. I've been alone all this time. Talking is... Don't worry. We're not in a rush here. You look so different. Yeah. I haven't been back in the courtroom since the last day of our case. Meaning you're not a lawyer? Not quite. I'm a detective. In Camarocho. Pays the pills, you know. And that's all my fault? Hey. <sighs> Sorry. This isn't what I came here to talk about today. <clears throat> Three years ago, at the ADDC. Did you... Did you actually murder Wakusan or not? What? Yagami, I... I don't understand. You know I'm innocent. I didn't murder Wakusan. Or Emi-chan. Why won't you listen to me? I told you time and time again, I didn't kill anyone! Why won't people just believe me? <laughs> the prosecution had more than enough evidence to convict you for Emmy's murder. It was an open and shut case. There was nothing we could do. Of course not. How am I gonna win when my own lawyer doesn't believe I'm innocent? Don't think I couldn't tell. Every time you went up there and tried to clear my name, you looked like you were gonna puke. So, um, Okubo-san, you really didn't do it either time? <sighs> That's what I've been saying all along. My name is Hoshino, from the Genda Law Office. If you don't mind, we have a theory about the ADDC incident you were on trial for. I do mind. It doesn't have anything to do with me. But don't you want to know who really killed Wakusan? <laughs> it was an ADDC researcher by the name of Yoji Shono. I remember him. But you're saying he did it? Why, though? Here, let me explain. Wakusan's death was an 89-related accident. That's our theory, at least. The drug must have killed him on the spot. Shono panicked, searching for a place to hide the body. Which led him to my truck, huh? Yeah. It must have been the only option he could think of. Things may have turned out differently had you actually reported finding Wakusan's body. But as we both know, that's not what happened. So all this was because I buried the body? It was a better stroke of luck than Shono could have ever asked for. After all, the cops never even suspected him. God damn it! I don't know what the hell I was thinking back then. It all happened so fast. I opened the truck, and the body was there. Naturally, I panicked. The police never would have believed I didn't kill the guy. Of course not. Why would they? I already had a criminal record, too. I was a fool. Okubo. So you really were innocent after all, huh? Do you even need to ask?
I guess not. Thank you. Yagami-san? Yagami-sensei! What about Emmy? Aren't you gonna ask me about her? I told you before, I never would have killed her! I... I want to believe you. I really do. But I already did everything I could. I searched non-stop for some kind of hint. But a guy can only spend so long poring over burnt scraps of evidence. After three years, I'm not holding out much hope. So... Guess the real killer is still out there. Just biding his time, waiting for my execution. How are you and I gonna face Emmy in the afterlife? Come on, man! Tell me how! Yagami-san. What's up? I think I'm gonna head back to Genda's. What are you up to tonight? Not sure yet. I think maybe I'll swing by Tender. I could use a drink. Yagami-san. I'll be all right. Later, Hoshino-kun. So, I hear you're defending Ayabe. Kuroiwa. Well, I had to come congratulate you myself on your triumphant return to the courtroom. I'm not gonna be the one defending him. Just helping with the investigation. Wasn't Shintani-sensei your mentor? You're helping to free the man who murdered him. <laughs> Are you confused or just desperate for a few scraps off the table? But it wouldn't be the first murderer you've set loose in our city. Not a good look. Aibe didn't kill Shintani. His gun begs to differ. The rifling matches the marks on the bullet. Yeah, that's how the real killer framed him for it. If you seriously can't see that, then I'm not the confused one here. Say what you will. Um, hello? You need something? More or less. Doesn't look like you're here to talk. That's right. Your little detective game's over, Yagami. Yagami-san! Hoshinoku, stay back! Huh? This guy's dangerous. Uh, I can see that.
Damn it! Yagami-san, are you okay? I'm fine. But that guy... wasn't messing around. What do you mean? He would've killed me for sure if I let him. Maybe one of Hamura's men? What's up, Tuck? How'd your chat with Okubo go? Listen, someone just tried to murder me. Probably sent by Hamura. What? Watch your back, Kaito-san. Where are you now? Right by the office. Got Sugiura with me, too. Don't go back there. Not now. Hmm. All right. I got a place. Oh, yeah? KJR, the Kyore HQ. Hamura ain't gonna touch us there. Wait, you're gonna go there after we beat the crap out of Shioya and his whole crew in that club? You think they'll just let us hang out? Of course I do. We've got Kajihiro on our side. We'll go on ahead. Get your ass over there quick, yeah? Sounds like we're meeting at KJ Art. I heard. Well, let's go.